Welcome, everybody. I wanted to give just a beginning introduction to applied topology. So first, I want to talk about how you can think of data sets as points in some high dimensional space. So I'm going to use a very old example. This is an old data set from the late 1970s. Okay, They had 145 patients who came in. And from each patient, they measured five physical characteristics. So for each patient, let's say this is me. This is um, the patient, Henry. Okay, so they, they measured my weight. They measured my height. I should make my, uh, my vector a little bit longer. They measured my glucose level. They measured my insulin level. And then they measured this um, interaction, interaction between my glucose and insulin level. Okay, so if all they had measured about me was the first two, if they only had measured height and weight, right, then they could have thought of me as a, as a point in 2D, right? I could have been a point with my um, height, or let's put weight on the x-axis. Okay, and height, right? So if you did this for a lot of people, you plotted their height and weight, I don't know, maybe there's some loose correlation, right? As pet people tend to get taller, they tend to get heavier, okay? Then if, you, if they only choose to measure my height, weight, and glucose level, so just those first three, then you could think of, of me as a point in three-dimensional space, okay? So then you could plot me in three-dimensional space where I have a height, a weight, and a glucose level. Okay. But then once they measure also my insulin level, they have a point in four-dimensional space. And once they measure this interaction number, um, they have a point in five-dimensional space. So you can't visualize four or five-dimensional space but still you can do data analysis there. A lot of the same math that works in two and 3D still works in higher dimensional space. Um, so in this particular study, what was really cool is that they, they found a way to protect, project it down from 5D space to 3D space. And when they did that, they learned something about the data. So, this is an artist's rendering, but you had a lot of data points near the central core. And then you also had a group of data points on this flare right here, and another group of data points that were on this, this flare right here, okay? This was, <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually what this corresponds to is sort of normal or pre-diabetic patients, healthy or pre-diabetic patients. This flare right here was type one patients. And this flare right here was type two diabetes. So early onset versus adult onset. So what's really interesting is that you might not have biological training, but just through data analysis training, you can potentially recognize from the shape of your data set that there are two different diseases going on here. And maybe you want to recognize not just diabetes, but are you diabetic type one or type two before um, you know, treating such a patient? Let me give you an example of a, of a much higher dimensional space. And this is one of the data sets that originally motivated applied topology, although now applied topology um, uh, has, has uh, evolved quite a bit and, and interacts a lot with machine learning. So, the second data set that I'll talk about briefly is um, cyclooctane data. So it's a molecule. I have eight carbons, although I lost one of my bonds. So I'm only holding seven carbons, but on the screen you can see eight, okay? And the carbons are bonded together and this mo molecule can bend and stretch in different ways, okay? So let's just record the positions of the eight carbons, okay? So we'll forget these hydrogens that are, um, in gray and only look at the carbon locations. So 
what I have here is I have carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now carbon one has an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate. Carbon two has an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate. So it is carbon three, so does carbon four, until we get to carbon eight. It has an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate. So you can encode, whoops. You can encode a carbon, a configuration of this molecule as a point in 24 dimensional space. So here we have our point and this symbol means that is an element of, or that is a point in. And then here we have 24 dimensional space. All right, so there's some other things going on. So in this data set, they also um, mod out by rigid rotation. So this carbon, rigid motions. So this carbon is considered the same as that carbon, or this carbon is considered the same as that carbon, because you can get from one to the other just by this rigid motion. They're really concerned about the, the conformation. So how does, how does it uh, bend? How does it, um, how do the bonds move relative to one another? So when you analyze this space, you can sort of um, find that you only fill out a low dimensional region of this high dimensional space. So even though we're in 24 dimensional space, there's really only two degrees of this molecule, two degrees of freedom. There's only two different variables that you can bend in this molecule. And so even in this high dimensional space, the configurations live on a, on a two dimensional subset. You know, it looks like a piece of paper that this data set is drawn from. And what's really cool about topological data analysis is you can figure out the, um, the actual shapes from which this data point is drawn. So let me tell you what's going on here. First of all, we have a sphere. So you can sort of see the sphere, you know, just like the surface of the earth. You know, the surface of the earth is two dimensional. That's why humans used to think the earth was flat, even though it's not. What we also have here is something that looks like this hourglass, okay? And this hourglass happens to be actually a Klein bottle, which maybe I'll describe for you in my next video. But a Klein bottle is this very beautiful two-dimensional shape that doesn't fit in 3D. And that, that's why it might be a little strange to you all. Um, but it does fit in 4D. And it also does fit in 24-dimensional space, OK? So the Klein bottle seems made up because it doesn't fit in 3D but it does fit in 24 dimensional space and it's not made up. There's a Klein bottle as I'll describe in this, in this, um, in this conformation space of this particular molecule. So in, in summary, topological data analysis is a way to extract shape from data. There's many ways to extract shape from data, but this is just, um, one evolution of taking a pure area of mathematics, topology, and as we'll see, adapting it sort of to the 21st century to, to analyze data sets. Thanks so much. We'll stop there in unless there are any public questions. I do have a question. Um, this might be a little silly, but... Um, being that I'm not a medical professional, I'm actually not certain how, what is measured in order to uh, diagnose someone with diabetes. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I guess I'm wondering, are one of these axes already something that was, was used um, in order to diagnose diabetes or did this actually illuminate like new information that they, they weren't aware of? The history, I will not swear to. I will not swear to whether this analysis um, helped develop the notion of two different types of disease. I have looked at these papers a little bit. Um, and um, this was early on, I, I imagine, in sort of dimensionality reduction. And so uh, they were looking at these techniques called projection pursuit, trying to find the best basis vectors with respect to, to view the data. 
And so they had techniques that would um, automatically project the data in many different ways, and then sort of try to um, pull out the projections that they thought would give the scientists the most uh, information. Um, what they found was that um, um, Yeah, I guess um, I guess in, from this plot we can see that we can see that three of the coordinates on their own do pretty well. So insulin and glucose. This is the interaction variable, right? So insulin, glucose, and the interaction between them on their own do pretty good at showing the shape of this data set. I would say. So maybe you're right. Maybe you can use insulin, glucose, and there's just res response to get a pretty good predictor you know, am I type one diabetic or am I type two diabetic just from using these coordinates. But I'm sure that's not how people in the medical profession actually, actually diagnose. Thank you. Follow up thoughts, questions, comments? Um, I, I just had kind of a question about the, the dimensionality reduction with the um, cyclooctane. Um, yeah. When, when you said it was two dimensional, do you mean like all of the data points are on a plane and it would look two dimensional in three space or the surface that the all of the data points are drawn from is like or all of the data points lie on some surface? Right. Great, uh, great question. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about dimensionality, but but I'm, I'm curious, Sam, if, if you'll humor me. So Let's say I have the surface of a donut. So I take a, I take a piece of paper and then I roll it up to get a cylinder. It's probably terrible audio for YouTube. And then I take the cylinder and I roll it up to get the surface of a donut. So that thing formed out of this thin piece of paper. Would you consider that two-dimensional or three-dimensional, Sam? Both answers are right. I, so I, I kind of see what you're saying because it, like, I, so I guess it seems, the distinction for me, it seems like is if your data points are actually forming a tor like a torus shape, it seems uh -huh. three-dimensional, even if it's like topologically equivalent to something two-dimensional, if that makes oh, sense. And, and maybe you're talking about the noise sticking out a little bit as well. That's another thing that could be going on. Um, so let me talk about the torus this surface of a donut. So not the interior, but the surface. I would call this a two-dimensional shape um, inside of 3D space, right? So it's a, it's a two-dimensional shape that fits inside of 3D space. So um, if you were a human living on the surface of this torus, right? You might think that you lived on a flat world because as far as you can see, it looks, it looks flat. Um, now it's, it's a different two-dimensional shape inside of 3D space than just a flat plane, right? It's wrapped around differently. But, but that's the notion of dimension that you talk about in topology. In topology, you really focus on the torus being two-dimensional. Um, and we don't care so much that the torus happens to live inside 3D comfortably. You know, in topology, we're usually focusing on, on this number here. And it's, you know, this number is coming from, we started with a two-dimensional piece of paper that we folded up to get this torus. Or another way of saying that is, if you look locally on the torus, you know, nearby you, it just looks like a cutout of a piece of paper. Okay, that, that makes a little more sense, I think. All right, let's, uh, let's end there. So thanks so much for your time and attention.